Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Justice for Aaron Brady campaign. Uh, hopefully, most of you are aware that um, in this series of videos, we are um, refuting the accusations uh, by the authorities, the Angarashi Akona, the DPP, and the mainstream media that the Bradys are in some way intimidating witnesses uh, involved either in the trial or the investigation into the mother of Detective Garda, Adrian Donoghue. And we have shown clearly thus far that um, the scoreboard is, as you see here, intimidation by Garda Siakona and the uh, authorities of witnesses is seven. Intimidation by the Brady family is nil. And we want to continue to highlight uh, what the campaign against us, the Bradys, um, to try and some way muddy the waters for upcoming cases uh, in the very near future. And we believe this um, false narrative of intimidation by the Bradys will be used in some way um, to create a false leverage during the course of those upcoming trials. Um, this evening we're going to look at another clear, clear example of intimidation and coercion by the authorities on both sides of the Atlantic. And I do believe most of you will have seen a video that was released of an American man who gives some details about how he was intimidated. But before that, obviously, you the Irish public, uh, we can understand how difficult it is for you to understand that our judicial system may steep so low as to be involved with criminal members of Angarda Shia Kona um, in creating a false narrative. So to show you, the Irish public, that there is no doubt that there is a belief even within the judicial system that coercion takes place. Now, I have shown you this picture before. There's Mr. Grehan. And as you can see now, Mr. Grehan is the defence barrister uh, for Gerard Hush in that ongoing case in Dublin at the moment. Now, um, what I do want to show you is uh, this clip here from Mr. Grehan. And Mr. Grehan said this on the belly of the court uh, in this ongoing case. The dropping of the murder charge against Jonathan Dowdle was an in incredibly powerful incentive for the ex Sinn Féin councillor to give a statement against his former co-accused Gerard Hush. So here we have one of the most senior prosecutors in the Irish judicial system, Brendan Graham. And you can see here again clearly, he is, he's not insinuating, he is saying, he is saying clearly that there are incentives and he's saying here, a powerful incentive for someone to change the story. Now, under any judicial law, uh, incentives is not part of coming forward and giving testimony. So Brendan Graham is telling us here from the floor of the court in front of the uh, judicial system in Ireland that there was an incredibly powerful incentive. So we will carry Brendan Graham's words on and into each and every one of those people who were coerced and were bullied and were intimidated and were given incredibly powerful incentives to give false statements against Aaron Brady. So the first thing we're going to do is, I think some of you have seen this video, but um, we're going to have another quick look at it. It's only four minutes and then we'll have a look at uh, some of the dialogue from it. And we'll just have a look at that video now. Thank you. But they don't have any of my information now, so I'm not testifying against you guys or anything. No, look, I want to know what they're saying. They're saying my girlfriend got this board and put in jail that, four months. When I, when, when I had Aaron at my house, they're saying to me that, that I was harboring a murderer, a cop murderer. But they forced you into this. They forced me, yes, because I was on, I was going to court. I got busted for drugs and so my truck. So the DEA in America. Oh, not just them. I had Homeland Security show up me at my house. The district attorney, um, state police, the FBI and my, my Irish, of, Irish, I, the two Irish cops. Two Irish cops. Yes. And they were forcing you to say stuff. They forced me to say anything. It, it, 
dude, they're ha harboring. They said, for known, for no, because of something with the IRA, for no association with the IRA, I'm looking at 25 years in prison. It's just bullshit, Jim. Well, no, that's true. Cause the FBI right? actually told. Me. I don't know. That's, that's what they say. You guys, but don't worry. But don't worry about nothing. I'm not going. I would never go near nothing. Are, they don't have none of my know. information. I haven't heard nothing from. They don't even have my new phone number. I, my new phone number. New new fucking address. My lawyer fucking because doesn't. Let, let me explain to you. They forced people to give statements about that kid, right? Well, Aaron. They forced another fella to give a statement about him as well. Yeah, yeah that's he's, what they're doing. He, he's just sitting in jail right now because Aaron? Of, because no. of these statements. Well, because of. But look at. I don't care, dude. You have to do what you gotta do. No, I'm not. Listen, you know what I'm I mean? not a fucking rat like that either. But, but look, dude. I got kids, and no, I, no. I didn't know nothing, anyway. Yeah. No, no. Because they pretty much read everything to me, and then I had to say, and I just signed it. No, because what but I'm, I'm saying not going to. I want to do. They would write out what they wanted you to say. No, they didn't. No, have me write out. They would. They would put the tape before they put the tape on. They would tell me everything that was going on, and that me actually had me going to a, read an article in the newspaper that was back in. Your Ireland. place in yeah. Ireland, yes. Yeah. And from there, they had me do it. Now, yes, I got off the charges. I had serious drug charges yeah, yeah. in my car. No, I know you were telling me about the pills. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, were, they were prescription pills. Yeah. Your own pills. Yeah, but I went to you right away and I told you what was going on. That Cheers, something happened. Look, all right? My girlfriend got deported. My Did wife she? got deported. you fucking His wife got me. deported. So but but hey, look at, are we deported? No, because no. they got nothing. They're bullshit. They're full of shit, man. It's yeah, so yeah, corrupt. Oh, no, no, this was, this what they're saying to me now. Do you think but that not was now, but last, oh, fucking right. They're telling me that. Did they frighten I'm, you like, with, like about jail? Oh, 25 years in jail. Said no, my kids. So they frighten oh, the shit out of you? At that time? Yeah. Obviously, no, whenever, well, yeah, I, and well, the you know my daughter. The cops, well, the FBI said that I'm I'm looking at 25 years. I harbored an, an own IRA member. He's not an IRA member. Even in the article, it's saying the same thing. In that, that, but that's, that that's the media. You know how yeah, the media is. Yeah, I know what the media is. We so know the media so, 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 so you contributing to a kid sitting in jail that's done nothing. You oh. do understand that? Oh, I do. Yes, I but do. I, and they told me 25 years. They were going to hold kids, me and you everything. you got to do what you got to do, you know? man. And yeah, fucking, you know, but I knew for a fact that there's nothing's going to happen. Yeah. But I was kind of pissed. If they, they, that's what they said, that they're using me. So Aaron, they're using me as an escape. How long and do that you know me? I know that. But it's it doesn't matter how long I've known you. Twenty-five years for yeah, so yeah, we understand. You I don't know any. Yes. Yeah. And for, you for were shitting kid. yourself but at yeah. that point. Now anything else I didn't care about. Like, how, how did he get you to say that? He, oh, that he said he done it. What did he tell you to say he done it? They were just no, Aaron. I never even said Aaron said it. I, I told them I never talked to Aaron about it. Yeah. I said I asked if Aaron had anything to do with it. They said no. And then uh, they started doing this, and they were like, oh, so you heard them in the bar talking. You know, yeah, that's what I did. So it was, like, it was like the Mandela effect. They were trying to convince yeah. you to, to put well, some thoughts in they, your they head. Were, yeah, exactly what they were doing, telling me what to basically right. say Tell without... Tell what to say yeah. without saying, say this. But you got to see it, though. The There's no way they can get me into Ireland. There's one thing I wouldn't I mean, go to Ireland. Did you say so, you might have to go? Listen, my parents, parents, no, they said I might have to go. But no, that, that they would ask me whether I'd be willing to go. Yeah. And I'd say, well, you know what? I got to talk to my wife and kids about that. So then I turned around and said, you know what? You give my wife and kids a one month vacation, all expense paid to yeah. Ireland, and I'll go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I wouldn't, there's no way. They can't find me anywhere. I walked up to your wife. She was they, like, get out of here. And well, I'm they like, scared okay. her. They scared her because with the, the shit of the IRA. We've done, done your driveway. But I know that. Now, as I've said, I know some of you have already seen this uh, video on uh, Twitter and other social media platforms. But uh, we're going to have a quick look through it um, initially, uh, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of background to who that gentleman is. Uh, the two young men uh, recording the conversation, uh, both of those men were suspects at one time. Uh, named numerous times during the course of uh, Brendan Graham's uh, speeches in the court in Dublin, particularly October, November, December and into January, uh, that's at the end of 2019 and into 2020, where the two brothers in Boston and their names were continually mentioned. But then when the authorities realised that we had found the CCTV footage eliminating completely one of those brothers, uh, his name disappeared. And that's the two young men recording this man and the man they're speaking to with the American accent is Matt. Now, Matt is, uh, he worked for the young men whose business was in Boston and for their dad. He worked for them for a number of years 
and he also worked with Aaron. When Aaron moved to America first in 2013, he um, worked with Matt. So uh, first thing Matt tells us there is uh, that he was arrested. Very important to mention here too, Matt is witness number 66 in the book of evidence. So the initial uh, intent by the DPP on Garda Síochána and the Irish authorities was to bring that man to court. And it shows you how much of a show, a theatre and a charade the whole thing is. Because that man was never, ever, ever going to be brought into a court in Ireland. But this was the pretense in the book of evidence. And his, uh, his statement is actually, it's not even a tissue of lies. It's, it makes no sense and it's complete nonsense. And it makes references to possibilities and uh, again, circumstantial and inference. And that is borne out by the conversation that's had on this video. And again, he says at the beginning of it, he was arrested. So here's another word from our senior investigating officer in the most important uh, murder investigation in the history of the Irish state. There was approximately five persons who came forward with information in where they stated that Aaron Brady had mentioned he, he was the one there we go. So here we have another situation where Pat Murray has told us approximately five people came forward. And we've called him out on this on numerous occasions. And here's another witness who did not come forward. He was arrested on the street. And again, I reiterate this, Pat Murray, uh, a man who writes in his book and pontificates uh, very much so about his attention to detail, crossing every T and dotting every A, I. No stone left unturned. Now, they are Pat Murray's words about himself. And he doesn't know how many people came forward in this more than investigation. It beggars belief that the man even has, it shows a wee bit about him that he even has the goal to sit and look out over a lake and say approximately five people came forward. Anyone who's head of an investigation would know exactly how many came forward, when they came forward, the time, the date, and what each of them had to say. So, um, that highlights that point again. But uh, we'll just go through a few of uh, what Matt said there during the course of that video. Um, I was going to court, I got uh, busted for drugs. So, he was caught with, and he was due to go to court, and due to go to jail for possession of uh, prescription drugs and cocaine. Does this ring a bell with the other uh, alleged witnesses who came forward with statements? Is, is this uh, telling us again that there's a team running through here? Row drugs. Daniel Cahill, uh, steroids and uh, cannabis along with his machete assault. So there's a team running through here very, very clearly. Uh, they, they forced me to say anything. Uh, I was, for no one association with the IRA, I'm looking at 25 years in prison. So it's quite simple. They threatened him. They intimidated the man and told him he's going to jail for 25 years for a known association with an IRA member. And... There has never been any mention of Aaron Brady having anything to do with IRA because he had no involvement or no truck with any paramilitary organisation. And indeed, Brendan Grehan was very specific, and the mainstream media can go and check this. Brendan Grehan was extremely specific at the beginning of the trial to tell us this was not a paramilitary operation, that this was purely a criminal operation. And he said it on numerous occasions on the floor of the court. So it shows that the cops on the ground are telling lies. Um, I, had, I, I didn't know nothing anyway because they pretty much read everything to me and then I had to say and I just signed it. So this is ringing the bell um, in relation to what Roe told us when he was arrested. That the guards pretty much wrote the statement 
and he signed it. So again, the thread is there. It's quite simple to see. And it's very, very easy to follow as far as we are concerned. Um, he says then, yes, I got off the charges. I had serious drug charges. FBI said, I'm looking at 25 years for harbouring a known IRA member. And I never even said Aaron said it. I told them uh, I never talked to Aaron about it. Now, <clears throat> Matt's statement in the book of evidence does uh, say that he heard a third party from a minor. That the boys might have had something to do with it or that's who was in the newspaper. And we're going to look at that later on in, the, in this video. So Aaron never even said it to this man, yet he's witness number 66 in the book of evidence. So it shows you they were willing to put it down, to create a story, to create a narrative for the prosecution. Yeah, and to, it, it's very hard to comprehend this and the type of people on Garda Shia Kona was dealing with here and that obviously targeted these people very specifically. Uh, you, give, you give my wife and kids one month holiday, all expenses paid in Ireland and I'll go. Now, I, I don't know where, how much further into uh, absolute uh, bedlam we can go before someone has to say, let's stop this nonsense. This must stop now. And again, he said, uh, they scared the shit out of my wife with the IRA thing. So not only are they intimidating him, they're intimidating his wife. So once again, let's have a look at the scores. So this now brings us up Matt was intimidated, going to jail for 25 years and uh, getting coerced because he was getting off his drugs charges. So that brings it up to eight, the authorities' intimidating witnesses. And it still remains the intimidation of witnesses by the Bradys at nil. And then the, we can put this in very clearly uh, where they intimidate Matt's wife. Because obviously the woman of the household has a big say in what's happening. So we have intimidation of witnesses by the authorities. Now nine. Intimidation of witnesses by the Bradys. Uh, still nil. And will continue to stay at nil. Now what I want to do very quickly is. Uh, this is a little bit of the vid this video I released back in February. And I've pixelated it because in some of these uh, scenes. Uh, Matt's face is uh, visible and I, I've actually said earlier today in relation to naming these people we could name them if we wanted to and we probably will have to in the very near future but for the moment we'll show these people respect because this man Matt was put under serious pressure he is a victim of the corruption of our judicial uh, system so this, this is why we have to show these people respect at this moment in time. So uh, this has pixelated. Now I have slowed it down. Uh, he's not talking slowed or he's not drunk. But I've slowed it down to give you, the public, an opportunity uh, to see the text and absorb some of what he's saying. And we'll have a quick look at that uh, as soon as we have a look at the video. We'll just have a quick look at it now. There we go. No. What's happening? They forced me into shit. Hey, hey, what's going on, brother? What's going on, man? I got you. Come here, come here. Come here. Sit still. I got arrested. And they forced me into this, but they don't have any of my information now, so I'm not testifying against you guys or anything. No, look, I want to know what they're saying. They're saying my husband got this board and put in jail for four listen, years. Listen, they told me that four months. when I when when I had Aaron at my house, they knew all about everything. Yeah. Because I, I mean, How they, about what? Oh, murder on the car. What's going no on? Doing What's going on, brother? Huh? What? what? This is what they, this is what they're saying. That they're Aaron, saying to you. you. Oh, you no, know, they they're saying to me that that I was harboring a murderer, a hot murderer. But they forced you into this. They forced me, yes, because I was on, I was going to court. I got busted for drugs and so my drugs. So the DEA 
in America. Oh, not just them. I had Homeland Security show up me at my house. The district attorney, um, state police, the FBI, and my my Irish, of, Irish. I the two Irish cops. Two Irish cops. Yes. And they were forcing you to say stuff. They about forced me to say anything. Dude, they're ha harboring. They said, for known, for no, because uh, something with the IRA, for no association with the IRA, I'm looking at 25 years in prison. It's just bullshit. Well, no, that's true. Who's the FBI right? actually told. I don't know. That's FBI what they say. You guys, your life. But don't worry. But don't worry about nothing. I'm not going. I would never go near nothing. Right. They don't have none of my know. information. I haven't heard nothing from. They don't even have my new phone number. I, my new phone number. New new fucking address. My lawyer fucking this, doesn't. Let, let me explain to you. They force people to give statements about that kid, right? But Aaron. They force another fella to give a statement about they? as well. Yeah, yeah that's he's, what they're doing. He, he, he's just sitting in jail right now because, Aaron, of, because yeah. of these statements. Well, because of. Well, look at. I don't care, dude. You have to do what you gotta do. No, I'm not. Listen, you know what I mean? I'm not a fucking rat like that either. But. but look at this. I got kids and. No, no. I didn't know nothing anyway. Yeah. No, no. Because they pretty much read everything to me and then I had to say and I just signed it. No, because what but I'm not going to do. Well, what did they do? Write out what they wanted you to say? No, they didn't. No, have me write out. They would. They would put the tape. After, before they put the tape on, they would tell me everything that was going on. And that me actually had me go into a to read an article in the newspaper that was back in your Ireland. place in Ireland. Yes. Yeah. And and in that clip, it covers uh, some or a lot of what we listened to in the first four minute clip. But the uh, one little piece I want to focus in here, and it's vitally important, where Matt tells us that he was taken and showing uh, newspapers from Ireland back home. And this is some of the newspaper articles he was showing. Garda killer set to become a dad. Uh, U.S. cops bust man who shot Adrian. So this is how the mainstream media were used very clearly in the framing of Aaron Brady. Because the likes of this poor man here, who even at this stage is still under the influence of some substance. He has obviously a very, he has quite a severe drug problem. He's taken in, he's threatened with 25 years in jail. He's showing this. This is Aaron Brady here. That's the, it's not Aaron there. And he would say yes, because it is Aaron. And yeah, all you have to do is say that he heard something or he said something, and you'll get off not only with your uh, drugs charges, existing drugs charges, uh, we'll not send you to jail for 25 years. So I hope that highlights the extent these people went to. I don't know how much uh, information the American authorities uh, did have. But I would hope those people in America who are watching this, who I am sure were also showing these headlines, who are also told this tissue of lies. And we would hope it is because of this that the American authorities went along with the collusion and the corruption and use their authority to force people with serious criminal issues and immigration issues to make false statements. Now we're going to continue uh, in the same vein, we're going to bring this score up a little bit higher. We're going to look at a young girl and another young man who were arrested in Boston who did not comply with the requests of the authorities. And guess what? They were deported. So we'll have another look at those in the next video. Once again, thank you to all those who are interacting with, the, with our site. Thank you so much for the subscriptions to our YouTube channel. Please, we have a, a little target of um, 300 before Christmas of subscriptions. I think we're up to nearly 240 now. So we've had... Uh, 
a 20% increase there very quickly. So please continue to subscribe. We're having issues with um, our sites again, continually being attacked. And obviously uh, we've put out numerous, numerous requests to the mainstream media to sit and discuss this, some of these issues with us. The mainstream media are now aware of a Garda Shia corner uh, threatening and bullying, bullying a witness on the streets of New York. Uh, they have information on Matt and all this is public information. A lot of the, what we are saying is available in the public domain for those who care to get it. And obviously uh, mainstream journalists would have access and know the routes to get that, uh, the routes to get that information. So they haven't come back to us uh, to discuss any of these points. So we're asking you once again, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please continue to like, comment and share. And if anyone has a mind to, please contact a local public representative and ask them just to have a look at the Aaron Brady case that we have some, that there are and there is some very serious issues uh, and it looks like it may be an unsafe conviction and we'll take it from there. Once again, thank you for um, your input and thank you for watching and we'll see you again uh, shortly with some uh, more videos which will show clearly it is not the Bradys that are intimidating uh, anyone. It is the authorities who are intimidating the witnesses in the investigation into the modern robbery at Lordship Credit Union. Thank you. Word spread. Irish cops were in town. Witnesses were found who had crucial evidence in the case. There was approximately five persons who came forward with information in where they stated that Adam Brady had mentioned he he was the one he was the one who shot the guard and a number.